Let's talk about using Emmaflow with DAGSUB. Emmaflow is an open source tool for machine learning lifecycle management. In essence, it's a bunch of tools combined together, but in this video, we'll be covering Emmaflow tracking, which is the solution to track experiment parameters and metrics. Emmaflow tracking is probably the most widely adopted tool for experiment tracking right now, but it does have its limitations. If you're trying to work as a team using Emmaflow, you're going to have to set up a central Emmaflow server on your cloud provider. It doesn't have any built-in access controls, so you can't control who can view experiments or log new experiments. And it's kind of hard to compare runs across different experiments, which is something that you often need to do. To solve these issues, we are integrating an Emmaflow server with every DAGSA project you create. This way, you can avoid the cloud setup you can use DAGSUB access controls to control who can view and log new experiments. And you get the improved DAGSUB experiment UI for your Emmaflow experiments. In this video, we'll be covering how to configure the Emmaflow uh, server and start logging experiments. And to do this, we'll be using the standard Emmaflow example project, which you can find link in the description and below. Let's get started. First, let's create an access token to use instead of a password. This is highly recommended. Go to your settings, tokens, then give the token a name and click generate token. Then let's take that and copy it, paste it into our terminal. I'm going to save it in an environment variable to use later when running the Emmaflow command. So type export my token equals and then paste the token and you're good to go. Now let's create a repository to log our experiments to. Go to create and then new repository. I'm going to call the, the repo Emmaflow tracking example. Just fill in the name and click create repository. Now let's push the local repository to DAGSUB. I already have a project that uses Emmaflow. I took the MNIST example from Emmaflow's repository. Let's add DAGSUB as a remote and push our code to Git. Type git remote add origin and then paste what we copied from DAGSUB. Then git push origin master. Now let's go back to DAGSUB and see what happened. We can see the files are there as expected. Now click remote and here you will see Emmaflow tracking remote. This is the URL for your Emmaflow server. Let's say I don't know what to do, so I hit the question mark. I can copy the snippet to the terminal. As you see, it defines three environment variables, the Emmaflow URI, my username, and my password, or access token in this case. I change these and the command I want to run, and then hit enter. The training is now running. Let's go back to the repo and refresh you'll see that new experiments were detected. Let's go and see what happened. So there are two runs and that's odd, but I actually know that this example runs the training first and then runs some tests on it and it records them separately. DAGSUB recognizes your MLflow tags and displays them as the metadata columns. So you, you can see one of them was recorded in testing mode and the other in training mode. Let's go ahead and run another experiment with slight changes so that it impacts the results. Okay, so I'm going to change the number of epochs. Let's change it from 10 to five. And also let's change the patience. It's now set to four. Let's change it to two. And that's it. Let's run it again. So now let's go back to DAG's Hub. Now, while it's running, we can actually see it in the experiment table already. Uh, you can see a run that's not yet finished see the data as it's being logged in real time. Now, after the second run is finished, let's compare the training metrics. 
select the experiments you want to compare and then hit compare. Now let's see what the results are. And yep, the experiment that trained for more epochs got better results. So it was worth waiting an extra few epochs.